the previous lecture we were discussing about the multi degree of freedom system with multi support excitations. Uh, we were looking into the equation of motion. The equation of motion can be written in two different forms. One is uh, in terms of the total displacement that is this equation uh, in which uh, all the quantities on the left hand side they are in terms of the total displacement, total acceleration and total velocity. And on the right hand side uh, we have uh, minus k s g into x g, k s g is the coupling matrix between the support degrees of freedom and the ground uh, degrees of freedom that is the non uh, that is the k s g is the non support coupling between the non support degrees of freedom and the support degrees of freedom that is the uh, degrees of freedom at the ground and x g is the ground displacement vector. The other form was uh, in terms of relative displacement uh, that is this equation in which all the quantities over here are uh, relative uh, quantities that is relative displacement, relative velocity and relative acceleration. And in this equation we had uh, the you know, R a matrix called the uh, coefficient matrix and x double dot g happens to be the ground acceleration vector. Uh, so, uh, the difference between these two equations are that one is written in terms of the total displacement, other is written in terms of the relative displacement. On the right hand side uh, uh, for this equation we require ground displacement to be support uh, to be um, specified at each support whereas, here at each support uh, we must know the ground acceleration and uh, then we can solve the problem. Uh, next uh, we wanted to explain uh, how uh, the R matrix is generated and uh, in the previous slide uh, that was given the R matrix is generated with the help of uh, this equation that is minus k s s inverse into k s g multiplied by x g or the R matrix is equal to minus k s s inverse into k s g. k s s inverse is the, uh, the partitioned stiffness matrix corresponding to the non support degrees of freedom and k s g is the coupling matrix between the non support degrees of freedom and the ground uh, degrees of freedom. So, once you are able to get these two matrices then one can construct the uh, R matrix. So, we had uh, shown an example for this uh, in the previous lecture. Uh, this is a frame in which we had three ground uh, excitations at three different supports and uh, these were the two degrees of freedom which are the non support degrees of freedom. So, the partition matrix for that or k s s matrix uh, was this the k s g was this and then with the help of the equation um, for r uh, we calculated this quantity that is k s s inverse k s g and that turned out to be one third uh, into one 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 and one one one. So, uh, the, the three ground displacements share equal uh, equally or share equally uh, in producing uh, the non support responses at the non support degrees of freedom. Next we take another example to illustrate the same you know, R matrix that means, how we can construct the R matrix uh, for a pitch roof portal frame. Uh, in this pitch roof portal frame we have the 1, 2, 3 these 3 degrees of freedom 
are the uh, rotational degrees of freedom and the, the 4 and 5 they are the translational degrees of freedom in addition to that we have two uh, support degrees of freedom that is 6 and 7. So, first what we do we write down the stiffness matrix for the uh, entire thing that is uh, uh, the for all the 7 degrees of freedom uh, we write down the stiffness matrix the way we write down the stiffness matrix uh, for a static analysis and then uh, we partition them. For example, x 1, x 2, x 3 they are the rotations and uh, these rotations are taken on the top. So, this is the 3 by 3 matrix corresponding to the uh, rotational uh, degrees of freedom and uh, this is the matrix 3 by 4 that we are calling as K, K R U. Uh, this is the coupling between the rotational degree of freedom and the translational degree of freedom and this is this 4 by 4 is the translational degrees of freedom um, uh, and the 4 by 4 square matrix correspond to that. So, from this uh, matrix we can obtain a condensed stiffness matrix corresponding to these uh, 4 degrees of freedom that we are calling as k bar u u and this k bar u u will be equal to k u u that is this matrix minus k u g u r k r r inverse multiplied by k r u. So, that is a standard condensation procedure that uh, I think all of you know and once you do that we get the condensed stiffness matrix corresponding to the translational degrees of freedom. So, this matrix now uh, is uh, the k bar u u matrix is now of size 4 by 4 and in that the degrees of freedom involved are x 4, x 5, x 6 and x 7 and again we partition them over here. So, that uh, these are the uh, this is a matrix corresponding to the non support degrees of freedom x 4 and x 5 and uh, this is the matrix corresponding to the support degrees of freedom and they are the coupling matrices. Now, uh, with this we get uh, the value of r using uh, again the previous uh, formulation that is um, r is equal to the uh, minus k s s or r is equal to minus k u s inverse into k bar u s g and these two matrices are given over here. So, with the help of that we get the value of r. So, this uh, quantities are shown here uh, in this uh, slide uh, the um, this portion that is your k r r matrix this is k r u matrix and then this was the k bar u u matrix and from there uh, we uh, isolated k u s matrix and k u s g matrix and after that we uh, obtain the value of r by simply uh, multiplying k s k u s inverse with k u s g and this is the 2 by 2 uh, r matrix that is generated. Next we take another problem uh, it is a uh, model of a cable state bridge uh, in that we have 
degrees of freedom uh, as this at the top we have a degree of freedom here we have a degree of freedom uh, two and at the center of the deck we consider another degree of freedom which is in the vertical direction. So, uh, we will try to find out the response of the structure uh, for these three degrees of freedom and uh, the entire equation of motion is written um, for these non support degrees of freedom. So, in addition to these degrees of freedom there are rotations at these points and we have translations at this support point, this support point and uh, this support point and this support point. So, we have in all 4 plus 3, 7 translational degrees of freedom uh, out of them 4 degrees of freedom are at the supports, 3 degrees of freedom are the non support degrees of freedom that is the translational degrees of freedom as 1, 2 and 3 and the rotations are 8, 9, 10, they, they are the rotations. So, what we do is the first we write down the you know, entire uh, stiffness matrix that is the stiffness matrix you know, for the entire system which is a 10 by 10 matrix. Out of that the first uh, 7 or 7 by 7 stiffness matrix corresponding to the uh, 7 translational degrees of freedom they are uh, grouped at the top and the 3 rotational degrees of freedom are grouped uh, at the uh, lower part of this vector. Uh, then we do this matrix con condensation using this uh, relationship uh, and condense the entire stiffness matrix to the translational degrees of freedom x 1 uh, to x 7. Once we get this condensed stiffness matrix, then this condensed stiffness matrix is further partitioned into the non support degrees of freedom that is the uh, 3 degrees of freedom uh, which were acting at the uh, 2 at the top of the pylons and 1 at the center of the deck, these are the 3 translational degrees of freedom and other 4 degrees of freedom are at the 4 supports of the Keppel support uh, red bridge. Uh, once we partition them, then using this matrix and this matrix we can obtain the value of the uh, R matrix. So, uh, in this way we constructed the R matrix for this problem and the details of this is given here that means uh, element by element um, we generated uh, the uh, different quantities and uh, then assembled them uh, to this 10 by 10 stiffness matrix and after that uh, we condensed them to the translational uh, degrees of freedom and from that we had taken out the 3 by 3 sub matrix uh, corresponding to non support degrees of freedom and obtained the R matrix and the resulting R matrix was this. So, uh, here again for the 4 different ground motions uh, we have this uh, 3 by 4 matrix and with the help of this 3 four, uh, by 4 matrix we solve the problem uh, that is the uh, problem in which on the right hand side we have got minus m r x double dot g uh, where x double dot g are the 4 ground acceleration defined at the 4 support points. Uh, next we uh, see how we can convert this uh, equation of motion that we had written and for the multi degree freedom system with uh, uh, the r coefficient or the r coefficient matrix on the right hand side in one case in which uh, we are writing down the equation of motion in terms of the relative displacement and in other case 
we had the equation of motion in terms of the total displacement and on the right hand side we had the KSG matrix and we require instead of ground acceleration ground displacements. So, those two second order differential equation or multi degree of freedom second order differential equation they can be written in the state phase form as before uh, only difference here will be that in the previous case we had uh, for single degree freedom system we had got minus k by m and minus c by m these were the terms which were written now in place of that now we have got minus k s s into m s s inverse. So, this term becomes this similarly the c by m term becomes uh, the you know, c s s into m s s inverse. So, and this uh, one becomes instead of 1 it becomes uh, uh, i. Uh, if we wish to write down the second uh, order differential equation in terms of total displacement as a uh, as, as a set of first order differential equation or in terms of the state space formulation uh, then the a matrix remain the same only thing that changes is the a bar 1 and here uh, we see that our a bar becomes equal to minus m s s inverse k s g this will be not k s s this will be k s g into x g. So, this will be the only change. Therefore, uh, the for multi degree freedom system with multi support excitation uh, we can write down the equation in four different forms uh, two equations can be written as a second order uh, differential equation one in terms of total displacement and other in terms of the relative displacement and uh, correspondingly we can have two state space formulation for these two equations. Now, we try to write down the um, state space form of the equation motion for the problem 3.4 that is uh, this problem uh, yes for this problem uh, we wish to write down the entire equation of motion in the state space form. So, here uh, we have seen that if we were wanting to write down the equation of motion in terms of your state space form we have to generate a matrix called A matrix and that A matrix contains uh, C s s or C by m. So, C matrix must be known. So, that is the first thing that you do uh, for the entire structure now we obtain the C matrix. So, for obtaining the C matrix this approach is already known to all of you that one can uh, obtain the C matrix of a particular structure provided we know the first few frequencies of the system. So, here it was a 2 degree freedom problem in the sense that there are 2 non support degrees of freedom. So, the we had 2 natural frequencies. So, once we know these two natural frequencies then with the help of that one can compute the values of alpha and beta which are required to obtain the C matrix considering the C matrix to be mass and stiffness proportional. That is uh, we write down C s s to be is equal to alpha times mass matrix plus beta times the k matrix. And Use, uh, using this we can obtain this uh, damping matrix for the entire system. And once we have this uh, damping matrix written for the system then uh, we can use the same uh, equation that is uh, uh, this formulation that is k s s we know we know m s s inverse and also we know now the SCSS matrix and MSS uh, inverse is also known. So, therefore, using this we can write down the uh, entire A matrix and this A matrix turns out to be uh, uh, like this here it is it will not be 1 8 
2, it will be 1, 0, 2, you can make this correction, where rho is equal to root over k by m. And on the uh, right hand side, the force vector, if you look at the expression for the force vector, this force vector is equal to m minus r into x double dot g. So, r for this problem we obtained as the this was the r that is one third one 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 one. So, using this value of r one can obtain the value of the f that is minus 0 0.33 into x double dot g 1 plus x double dot g 2 plus x double dot g 3. Uh, that is what we observed before that all the three uh, uh, ground accelerations uh, equally uh, influenced the non-support degrees of freedom. So, that is how uh, the, the terms of the load vector over here that is generated. Now, if we wish to uh, write down the equation of motion in terms of the total displacement and again in the state space form, then the A matrix remain un, remains unchanged as I said before. So, A matrix remains uh, this and only thing that changes is the right hand side load vector and the right hand side load vector turns out to be x g 1 plus x g 2 plus x g 3 into rho square and uh, this is uh, nothing but minus k s g into uh, the uh, MSS inverse. So, k s g into MSS inverse turns out to be this one and here we can see that the degrees of freedom that we require uh, are uh, not the degrees of freedom the uh, quantities that are that is required for defining the force is the three displacement at the three supports. Now, once we are able to write down the equation of motion uh, in different forms that I described that is in the state space form and as ordinary differential equation in terms of relative displacement and in terms of the total displacements, then we come to how we can solve uh, these equations. So, that is what we are uh, calling as the response analysis. Now, the response analysis can be carried out both in time and frequency domain and first uh, we will take up the single degree of freedom system and the methodology that we will be adopting for solving the single degree of freedom system that will be extended to multi degree of freedom system later. Now, in time domain analysis there are many methods which are available out of that uh, we will take up only two methods that is a Duhamel integration and a numerous beta method. Uh, I think in your dynamics course all of you have already uh, done these uh, two uh, time history methods which are very popular in earthquake engineering. Uh, therefore, you are acquainted with uh, the different important things associated with this two integration strategies. Uh, however, uh, we will recast uh, these uh, two formulation that is the Duhamel integration formulation and a numerous met beta method formulation in the form of a recursive equations rather than uh, the usual way that you have uh, solved in your dynamics course. Let us take the Duhamel integral first. Uh, as you know that uh, a Duhamel integral, uh, we uh, consider the load to be a series of impulses 
that is the load to be consisting of a series of impulses uh, like this and these uh, series of uh, impulses for that if we consider any at any time t we see what is the response that we obtain and then sum up the effect for or sum of the responses for all the impulses to get the final response uh, at this particular point. So, uh, what we do is that uh, first we consider a, a, a impulse at a time tau from the Uh, from the origin that is 0 time and a an impulse of f multiplied by d tau is applied to the system or single degree of system at time tau. Then the elapsed time is t minus tau that is when the impulse is produced over here then we see its effect at this time that is after a time of t minus tau so that is what we call as the elapsed time elapsed time of t minus tau. Now, as you all of you know that the problem of producing an impulse to a single degree system is equivalent to producing a velocity uh, to the system or importing a velocity to the system. So, we can conceive the problem as a damped free oscillation with a initial condition of displacement and a initial condition of velocity. So, in the free vibration equation, if we provide uh, the these initial conditions that is the displacement at from here we start counting the time. So, at 0 time if we consider what is the uh, displacement and what is the velocity then we can substitute this displacement and velocity into the equation that provides you the response at any instant of time t for a uh, damped free oscillating single degree of freedom system. And that is uh, uh, given over here, uh, this is a standard, uh, um, this is a standard uh, equation that is uh, the x t minus tau, x t minus tau is the response at uh, time t and this is given as e to the power minus jau omega n t and this is the velocity part that is that if m into x double dot g tau this is the force impulse force that is provided at 0 time. So, that is f tau that divided by m that becomes the initial velocity and uh, uh, omega d is the damped frequency. So, and sin omega d t minus tau d tau comes because f tau d tau that is the total impulse. So, that is how d tau is coming into picture over here. And this uh, equation is valid for 0 displacement at the initial stage and the velocity is equal to f tau d tau divided by m. So, for this velocity uh, we get this is a standard equation for damped free oscillation. Now, this x t minus tau uh, as we obtain then one can obtain the response x t for all the impulses that acts from this point to a time t 
So, we integrate from 0 to t these entire expression over here and so and this is known as the Duhamel integration and using this Duhamel integration one can find out the value of the response at any instant of time t. If this f tau is an integrable function then there is no problem one can obtain the response of this x t in a closed form analytically. However, if f tau is not a integrable function then one has to perform a numerical integration for this to get the value of x t. So, instead of doing that numerical integration uh, one can recast the entire formulation in a uh, slightly different fashion. Let us consider uh, this as the ground acceleration uh, or the support acceleration for a single degree of freedom system and for that we have a interval of time delta t. So, that we can define a time uh, step k and next time step k plus 1 difference between them is delta t at uh, the these two time steps the values of f k plus 1 and f k they are known that is uh, the ground accelerations at these two points are known. So, we can multiply them by m to get the forces at these two points. Now, if we look at the response at k plus 1, then the response at k plus 1 can be obtained provided we know the response at k that is the k time station. And in this kind of formulation in which we obtain the response at a particular time step with the help of the responses at the previous time step. This uh, the uh, formulation is called the time marching formulation. So, in a time marching algorithm what we do is start with uh, 0 time and they are 0 time the displacement velocity and acceleration they are known and then we obtain the response at the next time step that is at after the interval of delta t and then we proceed in this particular fashion. So, this is a, a time marching scheme, but this time marching scheme uh, to be used in the case of a Duhamel integration requires uh, some kind of uh, consideration and uh, that is uh, what is uh, uh, shown over here in this slide that uh, what we do is that um, at k that is at time t k we know the forcing function f k. We also know the forcing function at k plus 1 time then what we consider that the as if the force between f k and f k plus 1 is varying linearly. That means, it is varying in this particular fashion you know, from this point to this point. And uh, once we assume that they are uh, that is linearly varying then at any time tau we can obtain the value of this f tau in terms of f k plus 1 and f k. So, this is what we do here uh, in this formulation and we uh, write down the f tau in this particular way and uh, that is it is a sum of a constant force f k and then uh, it is a linear term which is or the triangular part of the uh, equation. So, using uh, this equation one can define f tau 
at any time tau taken or counted from t k. Now, if we look at the responses at time t k plus 1, then we see that the response at uh, time t k plus 1 is uh, consist uh, is consisting of 3 responses that is the initial condition that exists at k or the time step k for that with that initial condition the single degree of freedom system vibrates as a damped free oscillator and because of this vibration there will be some response which will be produced at t k plus 1 that is the next time step. So, this is the first part of the response. Second part of the response is due to f k uh, that is constantly acting over the uh, duration of time delta t and the third portion is the triangular variation of the load between k and k plus 1. So, the responses for these three would provide the final response at t k plus 1. So, t k plus 1 clearly now depend upon these quantities that is x k, x dot k. So, they are the initial uh, velocity and displacement at uh, kth time step and f k and f k plus 1. So, what we can uh, write down uh, is that x k plus 1 we can uh, write to be is equal to some constant multiplied by c k x k, some constant multiplied by x dot k, some constant multiplied by f k and some constant multiplied by f k plus 1. Similarly, one can write down x double dot k plus 1 uh, in terms of this equation where d 1, d 2, d 3, d 4 are the constants that is to be obtained. And then one can obtain the value of x double dot k 1 that is the acceleration at k plus 1 at time and that is from the parent single degree of freedom equation that is uh, if we know the displacement and velocity of the system one can find out the acceleration. So, using this three equation one can get at any time step k plus 1 all the three quantities that is the displacement, velocity and acceleration in terms of the displacement, velocity at the previous time step that is k and the forces which are acting at k and k plus 1 they are eventually known. Uh, therefore, uh, the uh, formulation uh, is centered around finding out this constant c 1, c 2, c 3, c 4 and d 1, d 2, d 3, d 4. Now, in this we can see that the first part of the solution that is for the initial condition this will be a function of x k, x dot k and delta t. Second part of the solution that is for a constant f k that is a rectangular f k. Uh, forcing uh, function uh, what is the response at this point. So, this will be a function of f k and delta t and for the triangular part or for third part of the solution requires the knowledge of f k, f k plus 1 and delta t. Now, this comes out the first solution comes out from uh, the damped free oscillation in that 
simply we substitute the initial condition as x k and x dot k and then find out what will be the response at uh, k plus 1 at time step. This one is a problem of a Duhamel integral for a rectangular type of pulse and for that the analytical solution is available and all of you have done that. Similarly, for this one the response can be obtained for a triangular kind of pulse and this also can be obtained using the Duhamel integration uh, because it can be obtained analytically. So, for all the three the analytical solutions are available then once we get all the three solutions then these three solutions are summed up together and the like terms that is the terms containing x k, terms containing x dot k and terms containing f k and f k plus 1 uh, they are all collected together and the uh, uh, multipliers that will be associated with these variables they are they would form the values of c 1, c 2, c 3, c 4 etcetera and that is what is done over here and once you uh, are able to find out these quantities that is c 1, d 1, c 2, d 2, c 3, d 3 etcetera then you can write down the equation in this recursive form where q k plus 1 is equal to a matrix A into q k plus h into f k plus 1 where q basically represents for all the three quantities in a vector form and uh, A is a matrix consisting of uh, these constants and the H is again a matrix consisting of some of the elements uh, of uh, some of the uh, constants uh, of those uh, equations. So, the C 1, C 2, C 3 etcetera can be computed the way I told you and they are uh, for your information given over here in these equations and you can see that these C 1, C 2, C 3 etcetera depend upon a delta t that is a time step and all other quantities are known that is omega d del uh, omega t xi omega n etcetera all of them are known therefore, one can compute easily the values of C 1, C 2, C 3, C 4, D 1, D 2, D 3, D 4 etcetera. So, that is the recursive form of the Duhamel integration and uh, it requires the solution of uh, the problem for certain known cases that is the known cases are that uh, damp free oscillation that is a known case the solution for a rectangular pulse that also can be obtained uh, using the Hormel integral analytically and the response for a triangular pulse that also can be obtained using an analytical uh, solution. Uh, so, therefore, uh, with these uh, the with these three known solutions one can obtain the constant C 1, C 2, C 3, C 4 uh, of the A matrix and one can uh, write down the entire Duhamel integration uh, in this recursive format. The uh, advantage of this uh, solution is that uh, if f tau or the force if it is not an integrable one then in any way one has to go for a numerical integration. So, instead of doing that in numerical integration one is using the known solution for a, a triangular pulse, rectangular pulse, pulse and a damp free oscillation. So, using these three solutions you are able to uh, tackle the problem. Next is the numerous beta method. In the numerous beta method uh, we uh, again solve the problem numerically. 
using a time marching scheme that is uh, you try to find out the response at k plus 1 at time step and with the help of the response at time k which will be taken as known. So, we start with 0 time t where uh, all the quantities displacement, velocity and accelerations are specified and we solve for the next time step using those values and in that particular fashion we march ahead. Now, the two key equations that are used in the Newmark's beta method are the ones that is shown in this equation 3.52 and 3.53. If we look at these two equations, these two equations are already known to you. For example, if I ask you to find out the velocity at a particular time given a velocity at some other time t, then you can find out that velocity is equal to the previous velocity plus the acceleration multiplied by the time t. That gives you the velocity x dot k plus 1. Only thing what has been done over here is that the instead of a constant acceleration that we assume over the time interval, here the velocity that is varying or uh, sorry the acceleration that is varying from k to k plus 1. So, that varying velocity is considered with the help of this particular formulation that is uh, here we assume that as if the acceleration is varying linearly. Now, if we assume that the acceleration is varying linearly, then it is equivalent to assuming that the displacement is varying quadratically. Because if you integrate twice the acceleration, then you get the displacement. So, if there is a linear variation of uh, the acceleration between two points, then if the acceleration is integrated, this linear variation will then become a uh, sorry uh, cubic variation sorry not quadratic cubic variation. Now, with this assumption that is the acceleration is uh, varying linearly, then velocity is varying quadratically and the displacement is varying in the cubic form with this assumption uh, we write down this particular two equation that is given a value of x dot k plus for a given for, you know for a given x dot k we can find out x dot x dot k plus 1 using this uh, particular linear variation of acceleration then we uh, can write down from that the displacement at k plus 1 at time step given the displacement at uh, time step k and velocity at time step k. So, this is again a very familiar equation with all of you. Say if we wish to find out the uh, displacement at a time at some time, then at the previous time whatever is the velocity that is say u plus v into t plus half f t square this is uh, what you have all done in your physics class. So, it in fact is a modification of that equation. Here these the first two terms remain the same. Here what we have done, we have manipulated the acceleration that is we are not assuming a constant acceleration and acting between the two points, but a acceleration which is varying linearly and therefore, uh, we take into account the acceleration at both the points 
and assume to vary very linearly between the two points. Now, if we uh, provide the value of delta as half, then this particular uh, term becomes an average acceleration between the two point. That is, uh, you can see that it, will, it turns out to be x double dot k plus x double dot k plus 1 divided by 2. Similarly, if we uh, consider beta to be is equal to 1 fourth, then this turns out to be half of the average acceleration into delta t square. Okay. So, we see that for a value of delta is equal to half and beta is equal to one fourth, uh, these uh, two formulations or these two equations uh, provide us the displacement and velocity at k plus 1 h station uh, using as assumption that the acceleration is varying linearly and we assume that uh, the, the acceleration to be an average acceleration over that time interval. Now, with this assumption, we can and go ahead uh, in this particular sequence uh, that is we write down the equation of motion uh, in the usual form that is m x double dot k plus 1 c x x dot k plus 1 into k x, uh, x k plus 1 is equal to minus m x double dot g k plus 1. So, this is the equation of motion at k time step. We can rewrite it in this fashion uh, by dividing the entire equation by m. So, this is the uh, equation uh, which is uh, written in terms of the frequency and damping then what we do is substitute the two equations 3.52 and 3.53 3 uh, in place of x k plus 1 and x dot k plus 1. So, x k plus 1 and x dot k plus 1 they are now written uh, using equation 3.52 and 3.53 3 that we have described before and once we substitute them into the equation, then we can see that the equation that will be there on the left hand side would be in terms of your x k, x dot k, x double dot k and the acceleration x double dot k plus 1. So, the x double dot k plus 1 this acceleration is not known to you or known to us. Uh, therefore, uh, from this equation one can find out x double dot k plus 1 and this will be a function of the known quantities that is the acceleration, displacement and velocity at the previous time step and uh, the uh, acceleration uh, ground acceleration at k plus 1 at time station. And once we get the value of x double dot k plus 1, then this can be substituted into the equation 3.52 and 3.53 3 that I have shown that is a two cardinal equation. In that e uh, equation if you substitute for x double dot k plus 1, then you get the value of x dot k plus 1 and x k plus 1. So, all the three quantities that is uh, x k plus 1 x dot k plus 1 and n x double dot k plus 1 can be now written in terms of the known quantities of x k, x dot k and x double dot k and of course, the load. So, this can be uh, written in a compact form like this that is q k plus 1 is equal to a matrix f n into q k multi plus h n into f k plus 1. So, f k plus 1 is the load that is acting 
uh, at the k plus 1 h station and q k is completely known that is the displacement velocity and acceleration at k time station and with the help of that we can obtain the value of the response uh, at k plus 1 at time station. Again this uh, is, is, is in the recursive form and this recursive equation provides you the responses uh, all the three responses at a particular time station with the help of the responses at the pri previous time station. And the F n matrix and the H n matrix are given over here. Uh, the alpha uh, turns out to be uh, the uh, this quantity which can be compensated. Thank you.